actually a question that it doesn't have anything to do with work, because you guys are going to do it. So, <laughs> um, when you were a kid, what movie traumatized you, or what scares you, even as an adult? Um, mostly because, you know, Halloween's coming, Friday the 13th's right. coming, so it just kind of gets us all in a spooky mood. Lore is spooky, so what things kind of scared you as a child? I, I just, I don't know. I was a slow child. Um, for some reason, um, it, it makes no sense. I can't believe this is actually how it went. Maybe it didn't. But anyway, I did see Halloween, and that was, of course, big, but it was a little bit more fun, scary, than, than really scary. And then I remember seeing Jaws and coming home and being afraid to be home alone. I don't know why. That's what I'm saying makes no sense. Right? That's, You're in the bathtub. Did Jaws you live near the over. ocean? Yeah, no. I was smack dab in nowhere near water in the middle of the country. So I don't get that, but that's how I remember that. Um, I, I remember another night watching something to do with aliens, and I can't, it might have been an X-Files, actually. And that got me. Alien abduction. Somehow my mind could imagine that that could be real. And that is what I like about the way that they're telling these stories, because we topped out a bit on what we can do with shock and gore and stunts. And, you know, we're getting up there to where there's not a lot further to go, and I keep thinking we have to engage the minds again into storytelling, and we're all trying to kind of get into movies, and we somehow like to be scared. I think it's very weird that we do what we do. And you're trying to suspend reality and get into this experience, and I think it helps when it crosses over with real storytelling that these stories, people experience this and have passed it down. So you wouldn't say that you're superstitious at all? I'm really not. But there are a couple of times where I'll notice myself doing something and go, oh, okay, I guess I am. Like, I can't say that I'm not anymore. I did um, I take a picture of Robert when we were filming and then deleted it, and I thought, oh, I'll just play it safe. And then I was like, that's so dumb. <laughs> like, why am I? Like, I just manhandled. I pulled his arm off by accident at one point. So what drew you to this show specifically? It was first the people that were involved. You know, I think X-Files is one of my favorite shows. It's on the top ten list, you know, and it just holds up. And, and I think they do an incredible job of telling really unique stories in X-Files. And Walking Dead, I thought, was a fascinating accomplishment that they could make that about people, actually, in this crazy arena. And then, so that's how it starts, the conversation with managers, is they say these people are involved, and you go, oh, okay. And then they send the script, and then I read it, and if my mind immediately starts thinking about how I would say it, then um, I don't get better the longer I think about it. So if I get an immediate picture, I know that I can probably not embarrass myself and do this. But I thought the story was well written. And it's a one-off story. How do you approach this as an actor instead of doing like seven seasons of True Blood where you yeah. have both characters? I mean, I guess you kind of approach it the same. You always feel in the beginning of any show that, you know, it's the first day in a new school. You're like, I don't, I hope that they like what I'm doing. And you have to do the first take and then the director comes out and you're like, mm. <laughs> and he says, you know, great, great, but do this or do that. Okay, okay. And then after a couple hours, you're like, okay, I think we're in the ballpark. Like on this story, it's really about a mother who loves her kid unconditionally and there's something very wrong and she can't figure it out. And because I can't, I always have felt with True Blood or anything or Maleficent that I can't play the supernatural. I can't play immortal. I can just play that I'm in this scene and I love this person and they're going to die. So, which is every episode of True Blood. But, uh, <laughs> but this, um, the difference, what was really nice was some sets continue to feel like a new school the whole episode. This, 
I felt like, wow, it feels like we've been doing this for a while. It feels like we've all been working together. This is really, and part of that was that in Atlanta where they were shooting it, that they had Walking Dead crew and directors that have been working together for years. So it was just, and the director that I had, Michael, was unbelievable, and the people cast with me, we just immediately gelled, and so if I had gotten to continue for seven years, I would have figured out more layers, but it didn't feel like I was kind of, there's some parts where you feel like you're fooling them. You're kind of getting away with, you know, fooling them. And now I kind of felt like, okay, you know, I, I know what I'm doing. And again, I think that comes from clear writing, good storytelling. And they always say never work with kids or dogs or in the water. How was it working? This kid was naturally creepy. <laughs> 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 Never a good time. Sorry if he hears this. He was the sweetest, most endearing boy you've ever met in your life. He was rather self-possessed for a kid his age, you know, like, possessed is probably not a good word <laughs> But, you know, he kind of could just be himself and be quiet and be comfortable in his own skin. And, and, and then he would say the, the line, you know, Robert doesn't like it when you do that. And just that kind of calm presence was like, that's creepy, you know. <laughs> and the director was also really great with him. So the hours are, you know, different and challenging because they can only work so many hours and they have to go to school and so then you got to hurry up and do part of the scene this way. But um, it was not bad. It wasn't strenuous for him or for us. I think we enjoyed each other. So have you listened to the podcast? And do you listen to other podcasts at all? You know, I I haven't listened to this one yet, and that's again like the Charlene Harris books. I'm gonna read them. I'm gonna read them. <laughs> <laughs> because I I became aware of the podcast by being cast in it, and then I didn't want to listen to it. I thought, is it gonna change how I do the performance? Like again, I just wanted to go with like my first impression. And it's like Maleficent. When they said they wanted me back, I was like, then I'm not going to watch the Angelina Jolie movie till after. <laughs> and I did watch it after. And the same with the Charlene Harris books. I thought, I'm just going to go with the script that I have to say. So, and I do listen to um, The Nerdist. And, and again, I, I was introduced to it because I was on it. And uh, Aisha Taylor... Tyler or Taylor, but she's so lovely, and I love listening to her podcast as well. And then I listen to Serial, right? Yeah. So, but I've been, I do this drive quite a bit that's a little bit long, and I've been doing books on tape. Like everybody at the table. Really? <laughs> Have you been? We were just doing talking about that earlier. Yeah, Audible, right? Like I'm, and I'm. <laughs> Or books really on phone is probably the right now appropriate. That's how you know how old someone is, because kids be like, what's a tape? Or is it going to be like, they say books on tape, but they don't even know what it means? <laughs> right, it's kind of like when you're on the computer and the little save disc is, a, is that little floppy that they'll never know what that is. Right, totally. Right. What is that a picture? Right. I'm like, why did you guys pick that? Back in my day. <laughs> we say, check the gate at the end of every, and that would be a little thing before the film. Now they still say check the gate, and there's no film, there's no gate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think some of those things just stick, and it's, you, it's yeah. tough to change to change that. I know too. rule of thumb, like all of these things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sleep tight. I found out touring a house in the south what that was, you know. So anywho, yeah. What what is, what is that? So they had these beds with ropes that were the structure that held the mattress and they had this big knob and a big wooden key that you would do this because it would loosen up over time. Yeah. Sleep tight. Sleep tight. But none of us go, what are you talking about? Sleep yeah, we don't tight. question that. Right. Sleep tight. Sleep drunk. <laughs> Speaking of drunk, if you were an alcoholic beverage, yeah. what would you be and what would be in it? 
Well, I just have to pick my favorite, probably, and that would be lemon drop. Ooh, so nice. vodka, oh, yes. <laughs> Straight vodka, a little bit of sugar lemon, and some sweetness. I like that answer. <laughs> Uh, Kristen, I feel like you're always playing this powerful female character. Is it something that you're, you're looking after, or do these roles just come into your life? I wonder that, because they, they, I feel like I fought for 15 years to play a woman with any intelligence or any background. And if you watch anything, you realize she's never blonde. And so I, I felt like I was just struggling against the stereotype of what I look like. And I was talking to another blondie about it today. Where no one's going to give us sympathy, but I swear people just kind of talk down to us. They kind of assume you're a little stupid. There's something light about the way we look where the people just don't imagine you have substance. And then I got Pam. And it was because she was written to be blonde in the book. That, and somehow I end up playing, and I wanted it for so long. And somehow I end up playing like one of the strongest female characters I've ever seen. I'm like, <laughs> and then Maleficent. So I thought, this is a typecasting, like, I hope sticks. <laughs> I want this to stay. Is there another, like, super strong female character you'd love to play in the future? I'm, there are a couple. Right now, I've started writing. Um, and I've written another, I've written one for myself and two girlfriends. And we're pitching it right now. So I hope that, that happens. It's in the comedic genre, though. And, you know, I just want to go back to making people laugh and laughing myself. Like, it's a, it's a lovely world to live in, and there's no night shooting. Right? <laughs>